Okay, I decided I would do a short video, um, nothing too long. Um, what I have here is the same program entered in that I had before. The difference being is that um, this little bit right here is basically output, you know, zero six is essentially what it translates to. Um, I've changed that to zero eight. And the reason for that is the output port here, which I've now gotten operational, is um, it's uh, got a chip select, and that chip select is set to zero eight. So, having said that, um, I've got this little test board here. Um, it's got a simple output port and an input port here. The input port is not hooked up at the moment, but you can see how. Um, all the LEDs are lit up. This top one is actually power. Uh, the rest of these are uh, for the 8 bits of the output port here. Uh, the chip select comes out and it's ORed with both read and write. So whenever it's a write operation, um, you know, it'll latch the register here. Whenever it's read operation, it will um, gate the uh, buffer here and allow you to pull data in from these seven switches. I know there's only seven, not eight. I didn't have room to put another switch. And then uh, whenever it's writing, it'll just basically write information to these LEDs, much like the, data, or the uh, uh, LED bar up here. Now the LED bar, if I'm not mistaken, was addressed at 06 hex. So this here is uh, 08 hex, this whole board, and it's either read or write from that address. Okay. So, what I had to do with the data bus here, um, this buffer was not working. Um, due to timing issues, it wasn't able to get the data onto the bus before the latch was actually supposed to happen. It is what it is. I just basically uh, nixed this one uh, buffer right here and just connected the uh, what would have been the buffered uh, data bus up directly to the data bus for the rest of the computer. Now this is a Z80 uh, or a CMOS version of the C80, so there should, and of course I'm only using um, uh, CMOS, you know, peripherals. So all these are either HC or HCT logic. Um, so there shouldn't really be an issue with fan out, but once you kind of bring it out onto this. Um, you know, ribbon cable here, you could have some issues and whatnot. If it becomes an issue, I can always decrease my oscillator speed. Right now, I'm sitting at 6 megahertz. I've got some other oscillators for 4, uh, 1.8432, and a couple others. So I can always decrease the speed in order to help solve some of the issues with maybe some noise. But as it sits right now, it's not a problem. It works just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this works. Um, I'm going to get over here and I'm going to Where's that run? So once I hit this, you'll see it's actually running. Um, not a problem. Works just fine. I figured I would do an update to this because it's been a while. I did sort everything else out. So at this point, um, it's ready to start building uh, the secondary board, which is up underneath here. And of course, you can see there's nothing there at the moment. But eventually, um, the idea is going to be that uh, the expansion port comes over the secondary board underneath, and then it will have maybe one or two uh, Z80 darts or SIOs, depending on which other stuff you use. I have both, but um, obviously, one will be for a serial monitor, one will be for you know, um, possibly connecting to other peripherals, uh, for example, maybe a uh, AdMega uh, or an ADR that can have a, you know, a short little sketch on it for doing maybe reader writes to an SD card. Uh, you know, lots of different things you can do. Not too uh, dissimilar from the, uh, uh, the uh, I, I believe it's the Nate Vim. They have a uh, kind of a secondary board for some of their computers. I think it's called the, uh, the Pairprop, or it stands for Parallel, uh, parallel Propeller. Uh, it's basically a board that you know uh, interfaces both um, mass storage and uh, keyboard input and VGA out uh, through use of a uh, uh, propeller chip. 
that. Kind of the same idea with this. You could use an ABR to kind of do the same thing. Or you could even use Grant Searle's, um, you know, a serial port TV interface, um, you know, with using two um, ABRs communicating over serial with that. So, I mean, it's a possibility. Uh, lots of different things you can do with it. Uh, we'll see. But as it sits right now, it is working. I'm going to do a, another video this morning, um, since I've got the time, about the software. Uh, there was a user, I uh, don't have his name with me at the moment, but he asked me to do a video about the, uh, the software. I, I'm assuming he wants to know how it works, you know, uh, what tools I used. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get that information out and, you know, just. I'm not going to release my source, obviously, but I'll kind of go over it and kind of show you my assembly, and you'll have to bear with me because I'm I'm not a software guy. I'm not even a hardware guy. I'm just a hobbyist, so everything that I'm doing is just as I learn. Um, I like to figure things out. And then also, um, there's another project. Um, this was actually something that I um, did just to see if I could do it uh, about a year ago. It's a 4-bit LU that's based on an EEPROM, um, an electrically you know, programmable read-only memory. And there was a user that posted <coughs> on um, the last video that you know he was looking at 4-bit ALUs. This is one that I've got. I, it should be expandable to 8 bits with a secondary uh, EEPROM. But I'm going to go over that form, just kind of show them you know, what I did maybe even upload some code so um, as it sits right now though that's it for this oh uh, one more thing um, whenever you reset of course you know it goes back to uh, 8000 hex I have added one uh, feature to the software if you latch bit one for the lower bits of the address or the um, data bus here and you actually reset it with that you can see it doesn't boot back to that uh, S E A I I O, um, or this really isn't supposed to be an, an A in this situation. You're supposed to read this as R, but basically serial I O. Um, the idea is that um, you can tell the computer whenever you're booting whether or not you want to boot into, you know, the manual configuration where you can use the, you know quote-unquote front panel, or if you want to boot to serial, um, for example, a serial monitor, maybe basic, a fourth interpreter, whatever it might be. So, I've got plenty of room on the uh, memory to, you know, plug some stuff in, you know, um, this is 32K, currently the software only uses about 150 bytes, so there's plenty of room on this, uh, you know, they've got basic interpreters that are as small as 4K, and of course I'm going to have to add some stuff in there for, um, you know, uh, input-output routines and things like that, and get everything working together. And of course, I'm not, you know, very good at assembly, so I'm going to have to work on that. But I've got plenty of room on this. Uh, 32K should be enough for, you know, uh, adding in a, uh, an assembly monitor and also, you know, for example, a version of BASIC. Heck, I mean, you know, you wouldn't really be able to do CPM because you'd have to have the RAM at a low address. But, you know, I mean, there's possibilities on there. I mean, you can even do your own operating system of some kind. Um, you know, you can do basically, you know, routine stuff, you know, maybe a text editor and things of that nature, but that's probably more that I really want to get to, although it would probably be fun. Um, but I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I'm going to upload another video. I'm going to shoot another video this morning and, um, you know, get that ready. And we'll uh, see what we need to do as far as the uh, rest of the... Um, uh, peripherals go in the future. Like I said, I am going to be doing a daughter board for this to basically add in a um, couple serial ports and probably some mass storage and maybe a couple other things, for example, um, maybe some IO, um, you know, blinky lights, things like that. So I'll update you guys as I get a chance to shoot videos. Um, I don't really get a whole lot of time to work on this kind of stuff. It is pretty much limited to the weekends because, you know, I work you know, pretty busy, uh, schedule throughout the week. So, um, but yeah, I mean, for now, that's your update.